uh, direct total labor hours needed per month. And then we're going to multiply that times the variable factory overhead rate, which is given to us in the problem. So here it's given at uh, 2.6. So we're going to say 2.6, and that's going to be all the way across this, uh, our dollars that we're basically going to allocate. Now, I want to point out here that that 2.6 does not mean 2.6 per hour as if we're paying it in wages. This, this, although we're using labor hours, the 2.6 is allocating overhead. Labor is just a way that we're going to use to allocate the overhead. So if we multiply that out, then we're going to say that this equals for July the uh, total labor hours times the factory overhead rate. It's the predetermined factory overhead rate. And then in uh, August, we have the number of labor hours times the predetermined factory overhead rate. Yes, you could copy this across, but I'm just going to do the calculation so we can see it three times. September times the predetermined overhead rate. And then we could total this up. We could equal the sum of the variable overhead for July, August, and September. All right, then we're going to have the budgeted fixed overhead. And in this problem, the fixed overhead is just going to be this 20, 21,000 of depreciation. So that's going to be straightforward. Fixed, fixed costs are pretty easy for us to budget for. They're going to be the same each month. So that's pretty easy for us. So we're just going to say, all right, that's 21,000 per month. We know it's the depreciation. It looks like it's a straight line depreciation. So 21,000 each month, we're going to sum that up equals the sum of for the quarter of July, August, September, third quarter, we have the 63. So then if we add that up, that'll give us the total overhead for July. So this equals the variable portion plus the fixed portion will give us the total of 46,461 for July, August. Yes, you can copy this across, but I'm going to do it just so we can see it a few times. We've got the variable portion plus the fixed portion. And then, ooh, not times, not times, delete equals the variable portion plus the fixed portion tab. And then uh, we have the September variable portion plus fixed portion tab. And once again, we should be able to do this two different ways. We could do the same calculation, the variable portion for the quarter plus the fixed portion for the quarter. Or we can add up July, August, and September quarters for the same 141, 111 in the formula bar here.